little bit of a surprise this morning. Mr. Little, will you come and pray for us? <laughs> Praise the Lord. While we're standing, let's talk to the Father. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning with a grateful heart. Thanking you for taking us through this week and meeting our needs and taking care of us over the dangerous highways. Thank you, Lord, for shielding us from seen and unseen danger. You've been good, Lord. And for that, we give you praise and we give you glory. And we thank you, Lord, for your word, for we can stand on your word. And the scripture says, even if we fail to believe, God is yet faithful. Thank you, Lord, because you said, cast every care on you. We will not worry, we will not take a concern, but we will cast it on you and asking you to work things out in our behalf. Because we realize today that the battle is not given to the swift nor to the strong, but it's given to him that endured to the end. Thank you, Lord, for this time together, Lord. Thank you for being able to see one another once again and how you blessed us and combing all our voices together in praise and worship. Bless the word today, Lord, and let it be a seed in our heart that it must bring forth fruit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Yes. All right. The choir is going to come forth and give us whatever we have. Whatever we have. Jerry, um, being in my life, even when we was at 
at Odell Tabernacle and he was um, trying to get me to join the choir. He didn't hear me singing. <laughs> <laughs> and I told him, I said, I can sing with you. I can sing along with you with the choir, but I can't I can't sing by myself. I said, you might put y'all might put me on the spot if I get up there and make you sing by myself. And I can't I can't sing by myself. He said, no we won't, no we won't. Outstanding person, and every time I saw him, saw him, it seemed like he was the same. He seemed, you find a lot of people sometimes they would be this and be something else after that, but he stayed on the positive mind. And I remember I've been knowing for well, well over 30 years. And I remember we used to work at the, uh, the store in Middle State, so I go by there and talk to him. He still, he still was Jerry. Just was an outstanding person. He's great. You're going to be missed, and ain't too much I can say that. What everybody else said. Well, I've I'm, never had that much communication directly with him. Actually, <coughs> I don't communicate a lot with anyone really. But uh, I just enjoy Jerry. You know, he's been saying his own thing. He's always had a praise in his heart. That was good. I met Jerry well, back in 95, I guess. And uh, I remember when we were doing the men's prayer breakfast, Jerry came in one Sunday morning. He said, I can't cook, but if you tell me and show me what to do, I'll help you out. So he was a good um, person to, you know, if I wanted him to do something, he would do it. We worked together in renovating the front of the church, the shelter out there and everything. We had no problem. Even since we've been here, you know, it was just, you know, a, 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 a nice spirit between me and him. I never had, had anything bad to say about him or anything. I knew, you know, uh, Jerry always sang that song, uh, Jesus is Real. He just get on that song. He just, he just, he just, he just carried on, you know, just stuck with you, you know. But uh, he's gonna be missed. He's gonna be missed. I would like to say that I've been known Jerry a little while. Matter of fact, I used to work with him on the job he was at. When my wife got sick and last night, I was driving a pulling trailer down the east coast from Jersey to Florida. I had to get off the road. I got three four days at night. I need to be home. So I went to that job where Jerry worked. I went there about two, three weeks and Jerry trained me. Jerry trained me. I didn't know he had talked to his son about I went to see him. His son told me, Jerry told me what kind of man he was. And of course, you and him have a chance to work. He trained me. And I noticed how big a man he was in general, down that he was. He was soft spoken. I've been knowing Jerry um, for a long time, um, ever since he moved back here to the community. Um, so I didn't know him too well whenever he first moved back because I was more uh, in line with Sean and Happy and stuff because we had some relationship. But it wasn't until after I got back out of the military that I really got to know Jerry when he was a fixture in the church and I found out he had married Mildred and you know, it was just kind of funny how all of that came together. But the two things that I, that I will most remember about Jerry is number one, his fashion sense. Um, as I looked in my closet, I still got some, some beige pants and lime green pants and you know, all of that stuff that Jerry used to, at the time I thought was a fashionable, now I'm getting to wear it and stuff. And the, um, the last thing that Jerry and I had conversation about was at a marriage seminar because we sat right beside him. And as the uh, moderator was talking about some of the weird courts and stuff that you do, you know, we was like giving each other that eye, like, yep, yeah, we've been through that and all of that stuff, taking out the garbage and not replacing the trash bag. You know, all of that stuff, we were just having little laughs about it. So Jerry is, uh, he would truly be missed, and he was a part of me, and, and you know, I'm sure that, you know, he's a part of all of us. And, you know, he, he did a lot of good things, and I just, you know, I'm, I'm truly sad that, that he, um, 
I just, um, Jerry was a big influence in my life, <laughs> and being a part of the choir, and leading the choir, and just being a man, he just, not only did he affect the men of the church, but also the women of the church, he was always, I know when Troy worked part-time, when I had the twins, he'd be the first one I pulled up, he'd be the first one to come take my babies to the church for me, or pick somebody's car, a lady in the parking yes. lot, anybody that needed help, he was just always there, you can always count on him, he was just, if he wasn't here, you say, where's Jerry, because he was just always here. I've known uh, Brother Jerry ever since I started uh, going to this church, and um, and he he was he was a real good man. And um, I remember working with him on the highway, I mean, on the Richardson Road. We used to clean up like once a year the road. And um, when I when I got the news he had passed away, it feels like it was a shock because it's there, it's some people that it feels like they supposed to be here, like you, you he's supposed to be here, and um. It's, I'm still, it's, it's shocking, and um... I haven't really known Jerry that long. I've known him for like four years. But I can remember the first year I came down here. And um, I met Jerry at White Oak. And that's when my sister from the I was having a revival. If I'm not mistaken, I met him there. And you know, we was talking, getting to know each other at the end. And I got to, uh, there and I was like, I said, what you do? He's like, tell me about it. I'll tell him about it. I'm like, I play drums, I'll do anything in the church, let me do whatever. I love going to church. He was like, you play drums, but your sister plays drums. And that's why she he would just always remind me in the beginning that I couldn't rush, I couldn't rush through life. I couldn't always get what I wanted to get. As soon as I wanted, I had to work for it. And I remember him always coming to go jangles, they'd be like, how you doing today? I'm like, I'm good. And he would always slide me a little, you know, five dollars, ten dollars, twenty dollars. I'm like, what's this for? He was like, well, everybody needs a little help. I'm like, Mr. J, I don't want to take your money. But he would always insist on me to take it. And it's just, you know, when I got the news, so I, I had to call my sister like, right oh, Pastor Ron text me saying, he said, VR Jerry. I'm like, is that our Jerry? She was like, oh, no. so she finds out, she tells me. It's just, it just breaks me, it just broke my heart. And he loved his wife. The last time we had rehearsal, he was on a Saturday morning and I said something. And he said, Well, I don't know. I said, you know what you got up this morning on a Saturday cooking breakfast? Yeah, you know you cook me breakfast all the time. You know you get up at two o'clock in the morning before I go to work and cook me breakfast. She's done it for years ever since we've been married, and I done got so used to it. She's always did she and she Grab on Mildred. <laughs> she, she, uh, whatever it takes. Then she fix me lunch so I can take with me. And, uh, and then he loved Jonathan. He really loved Jonathan. He was talking about. I look at the butcher at 59, only 59 years old, and, and soon making plans of retirement. I mean, you know, in the distant future, but uh, you never know. <laughs> Glory, hallelujah, hallelujah. He's good all the time. When we don't feel him, he's good. When we feel him, he's good. When things are going well, he's good. When things are not going well, he's good. He is God, he is God above all over. He never leaves, he never forsakes. He is our rock.
Please. 